So many people were impacted by the Maui wildfires, and one Maui chef immediately jumped into action, wanting to help those in the community who needed it most. Here to tell us more about how he and his team are making a difference after the devastation is Chef Peter Merriman of Merriman's Restaurants in Hawaii. Chef Peter, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, good morning, Olivia. Thanks for having me. Yes, absolutely. We are so excited to talk about all of the amazing things that you are doing over there in Hawaii. So let's first kind of establish who you are, Chef, and what is the Chef Peter Merriman's Restaurants? Okay, um, I'm a chef, obviously, and I, and I own um, several restaurants here on Maui and uh, in West Maui, uh, three three different restaurants, and uh, they're all closed at the moment. And none of the restaurants had any physical damage, but uh, the whole entire trade area has been uh, uh, shut down. Well, how did you first get started with your restaurants, especially over in the Hawaii area, Chef Peter? Okay, so I'm a chef, and uh, I had you know come to Hawaii for a year, about 40 years ago. I came for just for a little bit of fun, and ended up staying for 40 years. And um, you know, Hawaii is just a wonderful place. It's a great we have great food over here, and it, it was just so such a, a fantastic area to be a chef in with the raw materials we had to work with and so forth. And so we helped develop the uh, concept of Hawaii regional cuisine, and um, that. That's how we were able to build multiple restaurants instead of just one single outlet. So it does sound like your restaurants are kind of a staple over there in Hawaii. And it sounds like community means a whole lot to you. So let's get into those details. When the wildfires hit Hawaii, why did you think that your restaurants and what you offer needed to be out there as a resource for the community? Well, it's just, it's kind of obvious. So, you know, when you live in Hawaii, you start to really Realize that you're you're 2,500 miles from from any major piece of land, and being on Maui, we're even there's 170,000 residents on Maui, and that's it. You know, so we're we're not even Oahu, which has about a million people. That's where Honolulu is, and um, so we people in Hawaii tend to be self-reliant on a whole and so that's the way we've always looked at things like we need to take care of things for ourselves uh, people want to help us and they do but it usually takes a little while to get here so we have to be able to act quickly and what are some of the ways that you and your mayorman's restaurants are helping those in the community that were devastated by these wildfires in hawaii so what we were able to do, like the morning, like the fires were still burning. So the next morning we realized that everybody's out of electricity. Most people, you know, many, many people have had their homes burned down. Um, and so the number one thing people need to do is eat, right? And that's the one thing we can provide with it. And, and truthfully, in the very first day, what we're doing is we're going through what's in our refrigerators, right? We have, you know, food to feed three, four, five hundred 500 people a day and it, there's no electricity so we got to use that up so that's the first thing we did was start using that up but then we realized it was going to take a few days for the the people from the mainland whether it be fema or world central kitchen that feeds lots of people and so forth to get here and we needed to be out in front we were the avant-garde um of that that movement and so um we just called different purveyors and, and people we know around the island and they were everybody was so helpful they were like what do you need how do we get it to you and it was kind of difficult in the early days because the uh, west maui was blocked off they weren't letting any traffic go in or out of there understandably and so um it became a, a, a logistical issue as how to get food from um the airport, which is in Kahalui, more on the North Shore or Central Maui, over to West Maui. And there's only one road in that you could do it on. And that became a big part of what we had to do was figure out how to uh, organize convoys to get equipment, um, to get food, and sometimes people over there to help. Not often, We usually had enough people on that side. Um, one of the things that was really um, uh, gratifying was like there was no refrigeration, right? And so, what were we going? How are we going to cook for people without refrigeration? And out of the blue, somebody I didn't even know called me up and said, "Hey, you know, I have uh, refrigerated trucks. Uh, can can you use some?" And I said, "Sure." And he says, "Where do you need them?" And I, I told him these two different locations, and he said they'll be there. And sure enough, those two trucks showed up, and that's how we had refrigeration for about the next two weeks. 
to keep food um, ready to cook for people. And, and, and then we just started cooking food and, and you know, putting it on um, disposable plates. And, um, we, you know, we started doing over a thousand meals per day almost immediately. And then the next thing we were able to do was get a couple of Starlink uh, computer set up and because there was no communication out of West Maui that became all you know not as valuable as eating but pretty valuable to people because they were able to come to our restaurant and get on the internet and do what they needed to do a lot of which was tell their loved ones that they're okay so it was a, a really uh, a valuable thing for a lot of people Wow, so between feeding thousands of people every single day and providing free Wi-Fi, you really did start a movement within the community. What kind of response have you seen from those who survived the fires and are still out there in Hawaii? Well, you know, everyone's super appreciative to begin with. And, you know, you, you hear some stories about, you know, different bad things that are going on in, in the community. And, and a little bit of that is true. But what's really... Um, pleasing to, to watch and see is that the vast, vast majority of people are not only appreciative, but they're doing whatever they can. We have people coming to volunteer to help with us now who don't even work for us. You know, they just come up and help dish out food or whatever needs to be done. And then um, one, and the next thing, the next phase of this was ac after the bigger organizations came in and started setting up kitchens and feeding people, we realized there was a whole group of people that um, could not get to the places that were handing handing out food. And many people have lost their cars, right? Their house burned down and their car burned down, you know, like just to make things worse. And so we started delivering food uh, around West Maui. And we set up, um, and this is all done by my employees. This is not even me. This is just the, the, it was a real organic effort on the people that work in West Maui that happened to work in our restaurants. And they did, they just wanted to help their fellow citizens. And this is what they did. And those that had cars said, well, we'll start delivering. So we set up a, a, a method where you could register online to get a, field, a, a meal delivered. And often we would go to a community that was um, blocked off because the National Guard weren't letting people in there because of the dangers. And we would go to a central area inside that, that particular neighborhood and you know the Maui Police Department would um, escort us in. So um, just the way so many different um, components of the community came together, all working for the common good, was very gratifying. I believe it. I believe that that was truly gratifying just to see everybody come together, especially your employees out there delivering to everybody. But you know, I'm sure there is still help that is needed. So how can people chip in still with you, Chef Peter? Well, you know, we have a, um, a nonprofit, it's, and you can go online um, to find it, and um, it, it's called the Merriman Scholarship Fund, and it's it's a, a, 50, a nonprofit, a 501c3 that we had set up years ago to help uh, pay needy kids way to culinary school, but we switched it immediately to... Uh, to start using any donations to that organization to feed people in West Maui. And so it, if it's Merriman's and monkeypodrelief.com is the uh, is the website you can go to. So we own Merriman's restaurants and we own Monkey Pod restaurants by um, Merriman. So that's why there's two different names there. So it's Merriman's and monkeypodrelief.com. And uh, you can donate money there. If you don't want to give done, uh, donate to us, the Hawaii Community Foundation, and um, and then Oprah and The Rock are doing a really cool thing with the People's Fund. Uh, they're they're trying to generate as much. They've given ten million dollars seed money, and they're trying to get cash to people that have had their homes burned down there. So there's a way to give to us. There's a way to give the Hawaii, Hawaii Community Foundation. And if neither of those work for you, go to the People's Fund of Maui and help Oprah and Rock raise. They're trying to raise like sixty million dollars or something to help people. We're more, much smaller than that. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Chef Peter, for everything you are doing for those in the community at Hawaii. And we know that your efforts have not gone unnoticed and it's making a huge difference. So thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you, Olivia. And thank you, everyone, for your concern and the help that you've given uh, Maui thus far. Aloha. We appreciate it.